Hello, good morning everybody. This is Mohamed Ashik Khan. Once again, uh, a quick uh, discussion on uh, revision questions, specifically mock paper 2 of uh, BPP. Uh, today, I would like to take up with question number 19. A company's quick ratio has increased from 0.9 to 1 at 31 December 2011, that's last year, to 1.5 uh, to, uh, to 1 at 31 December 2012, the current year. Which of the following events could explain this increase? There are four answers here. Improved inventory control. If the inventory control is improved, the amount of inventory probably reduced. So the uh, ultimate answer, the current ratio equation, actually the current ratio, or sorry, quick ratio equation is current set minus inventory divided by current liability. So uh, inventory has nothing to do with quick ratio. So uh, that will not be an answer. Refinancing of a long term loan. The long term loan will not be part of the calculation for quick ratio. So that is not an answer. So we have two other answers left, uh, third and fourth. Third one is reduction in payables. If the payable reduce, the resulting answer will increase. If the payable increase, the resulting answer will decrease. Accordingly, the answer is the third one. So now we move on to the next question, question number 20. Yeah, question number 20. Uh, which of the following represents an error of original entry? The purchase of goods for resale using cash. Well, now, what do you mean by original entry? The right before the double entry, if there is any error, that would reflect that uh, particular error in our accounting records. So, the purchase of goods for resale using cash was debited to the purchase account and credited to the cash account using the incorrect amount in both cases. Now, uh, this could result on when the some, the clerk who receiving the purchase invoice uh, entering that in the day, day book and he is entering as a wrong amount that could reflect this. So this is something uh, that is related to original entry. Uh, so uh, the, this is the answer though. Second one, the purchase of goods for resale using cash was debited to the motor vehicles account and credit. No, this is not the answer. The purchase of goods for resale using cash was debited to the purchase account and credited to the sales debit. Not at all possible. There is no, no possibility of such uh, instance, so that is not an answer. The purchase of goods for resale using cash was debited to the purchase account and no credit. No, even that is not the answer. So, and also please remember, the error of original entry will not have any reflection to the trial balance. It will not cause any imbalance or disagreement to the trial balance. So, the correct answer is the first one. Now, let's move on to the question number 21. A machine was purchased for 100,000 on 1 January 2011 and was expected to have a useful life for 10 years. After 3 years, management revised their expectation of the remaining useful life to 20 years. The business depreciates machine using a straight line method. What is the carrying value of the machine at 31 December 2015? So, what you do now? See, you purchase the machine when? 1 January 2011. And so, after three years, 1 January 2012, 1 January 2013, and 1 January 2014. So now here, the cost of the machine is 100,000, lifetime is 10, and you use straight line method, and they don't, they don't speak about scrap value, so the depreciation per year is uh, 10,000. And for the entire th three years, Accumulated depreciation will be 30,000. So the net book value at the end of the three year will be 70. How you got? 100,000 minus 30. Now what they say, now they have revised the remaining useful life to 20 years. 
still they are using the same depreciation uh, policy meaning straight line method so therefore what you now do 70,000 you divide by 20 so when you do that Uh, per year you get 3,500. So that is first stop January 2014. So uh, now we need uh, when 31st December 2015 if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So that is after two years. This is two years here. Yeah? So two years 3,500 into two which is 7,000. So therefore, net book value would be 70 minus 7,000, you get 63,000. So let me check. So there you need to type the answer 63,000. And then your organization has received a statement from one of its suppliers showing an outstanding balance due to them 1,350. So question number, what is the question number here? 22. Yes. So the payable to supplier how much? 1350. And then on comparison with your ledger account, the following determine your ledger account shows a credit balance of 260. So payable to supplier as per us is 260. So what is the difference now? Let's work out the difference. 1350 minus 260. So I'm left with 1090. Now let's find out the reasons. The supplier has disallowed a settlement discount of 80 due to late payment of an invoice. So, discount received we need to cancel. So, that is 80. So, this is plus. And then, um, the supplier has not yet allowed for goods returned at the end of the period 270. So, returned 270, that also plus. And cash in transit, 8.30. So if you add all these three, 80 plus 270 plus plus um, 1,180. So, so minus one zero nine zero. So the difference here, unreconciled difference, is ninety. So the question they're asking: following consideration of these items, what is the unreconciled difference between the two records? That is ninety. So with this, I rem I I stop at this point and I will continue the, uh, the other uh, continuation of the question in my next video. Uh, stay tuned with uh, Muhammad Ashik Khan's uh, YouTube channel, STE uh, YouTube channel and please do subscribe my video uh, YouTube channel, share to your uh, loved ones and also don't forget to press the bell button. Thank you so much.